welcome back to the channel so in this video we'll talk about different forms of cancer so let's get started so firstly you can see we have hyperplastic and lately we'll have metaplastic and dysplasmia so starting with the first form of cancer which is hyperplastic so in this what happens is some growth contain cells that deviate only minimally from those of normal tissues but many nevertheless do not be normal in that they contain excessive number of cells such growths are hyperplastic so hyperplastic cells are very difficult to differentiate from normal cells as they possess property as of the normal cells but there are differentiating factors due to which we call them as cancer cells so in spite of their apparently deregulated proliferation the cells forming hyperplastic growths have retained the ability to assemble into tissues that appear reasonably normal so as we as i told you it's pretty much similar to a normal tissue but these are these contain areas which are pretty abnormal from normal cells due to which it proliferates indefinitely indefinitely and that is why it is termed as cancer cells so moving on with this so as you can see here we have a differentiating factor so these this is a normal cell pretty normal cell which in which contains a epithelial cell a milk duct and a stroma so this white portion is the milk duct so which uh, which is lined by a purple layer which we call as epithelial cells and there we have the overall layer which is covered by stroma so uh, the, so the entire part which is stroma and the deep purple lining is the epithelial cells and the white part is the milk duct so here's a differentiating factor between the two which is which is the normal versus the hyperplastic epithelium so in this we can see the morphology of a normal ductal epithelium of a mammary gland so which can be compared with different degrees of hyperplasmia so this is one diagram this is the other diagram so we have in this mildly hyperplastic milk duct shown at low magnification so this is shown at a pretty low magnification whereas the mammary glands have begun to form piles that protrude into the lumina so in this the mammary glands of the milk ducts have for the started to form piles or started form groups that protrude into the lumina and in this a more uh, proper magnified image is shown here all right so this was the normal cell that we are talking about so this this first is the normal cell and these two are the can these two are cancer cells shown at different magnifications so this is shown at less magnification whereas the second picture the last picture in this is shown at the highest magnification so it's a more high uh, advanced hyperplastic uh, hyperplastic uh, mammary duct which shows epithelial cells that are covered or crowded together and almost completely fill in lumen so you can see here the milk ducts are almost on the verge of closure so the milk ducts are about to close right so you can see very little or small openings or white spots here all right so these are milk ducts all right so these milk ducts or residual lumen you can say so these are about to get closed as the epithelial cells so these a dark purple lining or this dark purple patch uh creates to become cancerous or these epithelial cells are the source for cancer cells so uh, so the cancer cells arise from all of these epithelial cells and which lead to the closure of the milk ducts so this is a step by step process so this is the this is the first one was a normal cell and second picture was the uh, when a cell is infected by cancer cells so this is a very much a preliminary step and this is shown at the highest magnification where the actual destruction happens so moving on so then we have the next uh, cancer cell which is the metaplasmia form so in this an equally minimal deviation from normal is seen in metaplasmia where one type of normal cell layer is dispatched by cells of another type that are not normally encountered in the site within a tissue so these invaders although present in the long location often appear completely normal under the microscope all right so these are pretty normal also but these possess cancer cells which are a little advanced as compared to hyperplasmia so in this metaplasmia is the most uh, frequent in epithelial transition zones where one type of epithelial meets another so this is a point of difference that we need to learn which is it is found and it is found at the epithelial transition zones where the cells uh, gets displaced by another cells 
so this is uh, so this point will be clarifying your doubt if you have any for this transition zones so transition zones like these are found at the junction of the cervix with the uterus and the junction of esophagus and the stomach so in both the locations uterus and junction of esophagus and stomach a squamous epithelium normally undergoes an abrupt transition into a mucus secreting epithelium so these epithelial layers get uh, exchange or gets replaced at these points of junctions of esophagus and stomach and thereby we can observe these metaplasmia so these cells are observed at the transition zones mostly observed at uh, transition zones so this was about meta so as you can see here is a picture again for you so this is an example so for example an early indication of pre malignant change in the esophagus is a metaplastic conditions termed uh, termed as barrett esophagus so in which normal present squamous epithelium is replaced by secretory epithelial cells of type usually found within the stomach so this is very simple to understand that uh, cells or the epithelial cells present in the esophagus were replaced by cells that were found in the stomach all right which we now known as uh, when the change has happened in the esophagus which is now termed as barrett esophagus so very simple uh, in this case that the epithelial cells get replaced with one another so in this case esophagus cells were replaced with the cells found in the stomach and now the esophagus is termed as barrett esophagus so here is a picture for you again there are the cells of squamous epithelium are present here so moving on with this so talk about the last type which is dysplasmia so it's a slightly more abnormal tissue which is said to be dysplastic so cells with dysplasmia are usually abnormal cytologically that is appearance of cells uh, individual cells is no longer normal so this particular type or this particular cancer form is absolutely different from the other two so this particular cells or these particular cancer forms are absolutely cancerous and these show no signs of normal cells all right so you can uh, there are number of differentiating factors such as the cytological changes include variability in nuclear size shape increased nuclear staining by dyes increased ratio of nuclear versus cytoplasmic size increased mitotic activity and lack of cytoplasmic features associated with the normal differentiated cells of the tissue so these are a lot of differentiating factors that we'll see in the dysplasmia cells so in the dysplasmia uh, dysplastic growths the relative number of various cell types seen in the normal tissues are no longer observed so this was the point i was uh, trying to emphasize that uh, these possess no types of cells which are normal in nature all right so together these changes in individual cells are and in number cells a major effect on overall tissue architecture also dysplasmia is considered to be a transitional state between the completely benign growth and those that are pre malignant so benign ones are the starting of a tumor which are non cancerous and pre malignant are the cancerous ones so it acts as a intermediate state or it acts as a transition zone from a benign a benign point to a pre malignant tissue so let's just keep this video till here if you enjoy this video please give this video a like share and do subscribe this video i'll see you in, i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching